in 1971 a hijacker disappeared from an aircraft literally from an aircraft never ever to be found again 45 years of investigation by the FBI by a lot of private companies and a lot of private detectives as well and no one could find a single trace of that hijacker what's up everyone you're Bhatwesh Kumar here this is cockpit stories episode 9 and this is the story of the hijacker who was never ever found and the only unsolved mystery in civil aviation so the story starts on 24th of november 1971 A middle-aged man carrying a black suitcase approaches the ticketing counter for Northwest Orient Airlines at Portland Airport which is in the United States of America. The man buys a one-way ticket to Seattle. It's a very short flight, just a 30 minutes flight and he pays $20 and gets the ticket and he goes and boards the aircraft. Now the aircraft is a Boeing 727-100. The aircraft is now out of production but it used to be a workhorse back then. It's a 3 engine aircraft with all engines placed towards the tail cone of the aircraft. The man identifies himself as Dan Cooper which obviously is not his real name and the world would never find out what his real name was. So he goes he boards the aircraft takes his seat and orders some bourbon and soda and has a drink. Mr Cooper is wearing very normal clothes, a business suit, a white shirt and a black tie. Once the aircraft takes off, he calls the crew and he gives her a small note. The crew, thinking that the note has just the phone number of a lonely businessman, just puts the note in her purse and forgets about it. So Mr Cooper calls the crew once again and tells her, "Miss, you better read the note. I have a bomb with me." All right, so before we continue with Mr DB Cooper's story, a small update for all of you. I'm sure you know already about Vinod Yadav Aviation Academy. It's our own academy and where we teach upcoming pilots. So we are starting off with a new batch for CPL ground classes. So in case you guys are done with your boards or you have decided to become a pilot, you can always call us up or drop a WhatsApp on the numbers on the screen or in the description right now. Also, the orientation batch is also upcoming. It's starting from 9th of June. The registration is open. Links are in the description. So if you are still in class 9th, 10th, 11th or 12th and you want to see if aviation is the career for you or not, you're free to join in our orientation classes and find that out again registration is on the website you can call us up on the numbers given in the description anyways let's get back to our story the crew obviously gets scared so mr cooper asks her to sit down beside him and opens his briefcase just enough for the lady to see what's inside the briefcase she saw four cylinders a big timer and a big battery indicating that Mr Cooper indeed had a bomb inside the briefcase Mr Cooper now tells the crew that listen i have certain demands so he demands for $200000 and four parachutes that's the interesting thing yes he asked for four parachutes and $200000 which converted to today's money is approximately about 10 crore rupees so now the pilots are informed by the crew they reached seattle which was the destination for the aircraft and they held in seattle for about 2 hours while the police and the authorities in seattle arranged everything that the hijacker had asked for so they finally managed to arrange 200000 and four parachutes for mr cooper the aircraft finally lands into seattle and here mr cooper takes all the stuff from the authorities and lets all the passengers go There is not a single passenger on the aircraft now. It's just the crew and Mr. Cooper along with his four parachutes and the 10 crore rupees he had asked for. Now, all this time as per the accounts by the cabin crew and the pilots, Mr. Cooper was absolutely chilled out. He didn't have a single trace of fear, not a single drop of sweat on his forehead and he was absolutely in control of the situation like he had planned the whole thing out to absolute perfection now with all the money and the parachutes on board all passengers dropped off and just the crew available to him mr cooper told the pilots a few very important things one of them was he wanted the aircraft to take off again and fly towards reno airport in nevada apparently he had the whole route sketched out He also wanted the pilots to fly as slow as possible. He actually told them that I want you to fly with flaps at 15 degrees and at an altitude of below 10000 feet 
and also keep the aircraft unpressurized. So basically, he wanted the aircraft to be flying at a very low speed, at a low altitude, with no pressurization in the cabin. So after refueling, the aircraft once again took off for Reno, Nevada, as instructed by Mr. D.B. Cooper. Once the aircraft was settled in cruise, he asked the cabin crew to go to the cockpit and not come out. The crew, while going to the cockpit, the last she saw of Mr. D.B. Cooper was he was tying something around his waist. She had no idea what he was tying. It was most probably the money. This was the last sight the whole world ever had of Mr. Cooper. After this, no one in this world would ever see him again. At about 8 o'clock, an alarm in the cockpit buzzed while they were still flying towards Nevada which indicated that the rear air stair in the aircraft had been deployed. Now, the 727 was an interesting aircraft. One is, all the engines were installed towards the backside of the aircraft. They were not under the wings. Also, the aircraft had a very interesting feature of an air stair. Basically, the aircraft did not require ladders from outside like most airplanes do. It had an inbuilt ladder of its own which could be folded and extended as required. This ladder was deployed by Mr. Cooper and the cockpit crew got a warning in the cockpit that this had happened. However, there was no control in the cockpit which could extend or retract the ladder. The control was close to the ladder at the back of the aircraft. They only had a warning light in the cockpit. At 8.13, the aircraft tail suddenly jerked upwards as if some load had been thrown out of the aircraft. No one had any idea what had happened. The aircraft landed very safely at Reno, Nevada and the FBI, the local troops and the police, they all stormed the aircraft to look for Mr. D.B. Cooper but he was nowhere to be found. The only thing they found was his black tie. That's it. He had totally disappeared from the aircraft during the cruise. Also, if you guys are enjoying the story, if you guys enjoy the content on this channel, please do subscribe. It really helps me out. We're getting to 100,000 subscribers super duper soon. So a huge thank you to all of you for subscribing. So no one knew what had happened. But actually at 8.13, when the aircraft tail had suddenly jerked upwards, that was actually Mr. D.B. Cooper jumping out of the aircraft with his ransom money and the parachutes that he had got. He skydived his way to disappearance. Immediate searches were carried out. There were aerial searches, there were ground searches. Aircraft flew around, soldiers were sent on the ground. Scientists were called in to figure out where could he have landed on the ground. Everything possible was done by the FBI, a lot of private firms and a lot of private detectives. But all of them totally failed. On the ground, no traces of either the parachute or Mr. D.B. Cooper was ever to be found. The FBI and the US authorities also sent out directives telling which all notes were there in the ransom money. So in case someone came across those notes or those series numbers, they could inform the police and get some reward money. But as of date, those ransom money notes have never been into circulation. They were totally lost and they have never ever been used. The FBI investigation had been going on for 45 years. This was the most expensive, the most extensive and the longest running investigation in FBI history. The case file alone is 60 volumes huge, out of which you can also find a few on the FBI website. Only two physical evidences have been found till now of the case. One is, in 1978, about seven years after the incident, a printed placard was found. That placard had instructions on how to open the aft staircase of a Boeing 727. So this is supposedly from Mr. D.B. Cooper because it was found in the area where he is supposed to have jumped. The other evidence is in 1980, nine years after the incident, three packets of the ransom money were found. They were disintegrated and they were found at a river bank. It was confirmed that they are from the ransom money, but the remaining money was never found. Just three packets of money were found. Because these evidences failed to answer absolutely any questions, in fact, they ended up raising more questions than answers, everyone has theories on what actually happened. The investigating agencies and the FBI firmly believe 
that Mr. D.B. Cooper never survived the jump. What would have happened as per them was he jumped out of the aircraft but it was flying too fast. Also there were a lot of thunderstorms around the area in which the aircraft was flying. So as per them he would never have been able to open his parachute. He would have most probably fallen down on the ground and died. However his body or the parachutes or the money was never recovered. The other theory is which is the cool one is that Mr. D.B. Cooper actually survived the jump. This has been corroborated by a lot of professional skydivers and a lot of private investigators as well. So as per them, he actually survived the jump. He landed on the ground safely. He buried the money somewhere because he very well knew that money could not be used because obviously the police and everyone would be looking for it. So he just buried the money somewhere, changed his clothes, got back in his car, went back home and resumed his normal day-to-day -day life and no one ever got to know who this person was. Oh! The beautiful thing about this hijack was one, no one was ever harmed. He did not shout on any passenger, he did not shout on any crew. He was absolutely calm throughout the whole scenario. The second thing was his planning was very meticulous. He knew about the aircraft, he knew that the flaps could be deployed, he knew the aircraft would not be pressurized below 10,000 feet. He also knew how to open the aft air stairs and that is one thing which was not even known to the pilots because there was no situation where they would have to open the aft air stairs in air. So the pilots didn't even know about this but somehow Mr. Cooper knew that the air stairs could be opened in flight. He also had two drinks in the flight and he actually paid for those drinks which is just amazing. So that was the story of Mr. D.B. Cooper, how he very calmly hijacked an aircraft, took everyone for a ride, stole a lot of money and then just disappeared from the face of the world. I hope you guys enjoyed the story. If you did, drop in a like. Comment down below what you think would have happened to Mr. D.B. Cooper. If you have any theories, do let everyone know. Also, thank you for subscribing to the channel. We are getting to 100k super duper soon. So a big thank you to all of you for that. Well, that's about it for this episode of Cockpit Stories. And I'll see you guys in the next one.